What is evil? One of the most common questions I get is, what is the most evil handwriting I've ever seen? So my name is Bart Baggett. I founded Handwriting University, and I've seen thousands, if not tens of maybe even hundred thousands of handwriting samples. The one I'm going to show you today ranks number one is the most evil handwriting I've ever seen. And by definition, it's not just the handwriting, but it's the person. And that's why we're here, because the handwriting reveals the unconscious clues for whether somebody's good, bad, kind, sensitive, etc. So before I get the handwriting sample, let me tell you about this great story. So about 20 years ago, somebody came up with this handwriting and said, look at this guy, this is crazy. So his name is Thomas King, and we've had his handwriting sample. In fact, the other video, like a million views on YouTube, right? I didn't for stage. What I realized today is we now know what he did. We even have the ability to go look at his prison sentence. And I'm gonna go through those in this video today and show you all the infringements he's had. He is a mess. But what's cool about this is I'm gonna take you not only and show you the writing and you're gonna go, oh my God, that's, that's crazy. In fact, even if you don't believe in handwriting, even if you believe what Wikipedia says that it's a pseudoscience, even if you're not convinced that it has some use in courts and criminals and psychology, you'll look at the handwriting and think, yep, there is something to this science. There is no way that guy is normal. So I'm about to show it to you, but I wanna break it down into sections where you see the handwriting, you'll be overwhelmed, like, oh my God, that's nuts. And then I say, look, it's not just that overall our unconscious mind says, hey, that's, that's, that's crazy, because handwriting analysis is not a feeling. It's not an intuition. That's not the way the system in science works. I literally can break apart every letter go back to our dictionary and say, look, this is paranoia. This is fear of success. This is domineering. This is defensiveness. I don't take responsibility. It's someone else's fault. I'll break it down piece by piece. So are you ready to see the sample? And I'm going to put up right here. The first thing you'll notice is the overwhelming tangled writing. And so if you go to the dictionary, the primary trade dictionary in the Handwriting University curriculum, you'll see that means too many irons in the fire or a muddled mind, people getting too many things going. So the guy can't keep his thoughts straight and he sure has no organizational ability. And part of that is the reason he probably got caught at 18 or 19 years old doing what he did. Oh, by the way, what did he do? Uh, kidnapping and sexual assault, pretty bad. But it gets better because even after he went to prison, the infringements continued, the misbehavior, the inability to take orders, the inability to have any sort of a normal social aptitude. So let's go dig into the handwriting here. What you'll see, the first thing he has is this really bizarre D. So it looks like this. And so what we're looking at is the size of that loop right there. So you may have a little loop in your D like that. But when it gets big and it doesn't come to the baseline, that is a problem. We also see what we call a fear of success. And most books on graphology and handwriting analysis do not get this trait right. The fear of success, let me just show you, I'll write it down. It looks like this. And in his handwriting, I'll put up a close up of it, but it looks like a Y or a G that goes down from the baseline. Look at that. Now, if you look at his writing, it's hard to recognize these individual traits because it looks like a bunch of spaghetti. But that fear of success means that every time he got close to having something good in his life, his unconscious mind sabotaged it. It's one of the 10 hell traits I talk about in my book. And if you have any of these, it doesn't mean you're a serial killer or a rapist or a criminal. What it means is your unconscious mind is damaged and you've got unconscious habits that are probably derailing your success. Let's get back to Thomas, who is by far one of the most interesting people I have never met. Finally, one of the most interesting parts of handwriting is sexuality. And I have to be mindful of that word because I don't want to get it flagged on YouTube. So the lower zone loops have to do with someone's idea and history with intimacy. And intimacy would include, of course, sexuality. And he has triangles in the lower loop, which are almost always a clue that someone is experimental and outside the box. I'll leave it there, but remember, he was arrested and convicted for kidnapping and sexual assault. Now, the final most important piece of this puzzle is a trait that I see in many, many serial killers. I've done extensive research on serial killers, and what we find is they're much more organized than this guy. 
This guy's not a serial killer. He didn't have the organization, the intelligence, but serial killers are different. And maybe I'll make a separate video on serial killers because they're so fascinating because they're effective, meaning they're successful at what they do over and over again, and they avoid capture over and over again, which takes some form of intelligent organization, etc. You can't just be like a talkative serial killer. You can't not have an eye for detail. You mean, you, you're definitely gonna be evil and you've got something up here wrong, but it doesn't mean that you can't hold down a regular job and keep structure in your life. So the trait I'm referring to is called resentment. And if you have it in your handwriting, your life could be better if you could somehow get that resentment and let it go. I think there was a famous quote that says, the man that holds on to anger or resentment should dig two graves, one for himself and one for his victim. Because resentment and unhinged anger causes all kinds of issues within you. But the most important thing is it creates a sort of cycle where you blame other people and you blame the world for your problems. And so these people like this, these serial killers and, and, and evil people, therefore they justify their negative actions. They justify things like murder and rape and, and abuse. They justify it because they're angry about it. It's a very low-toned emotion and the people that are most joyous, they have a lack of anger and they have an easier time forgiving. So Thomas King is still in prison. I won't tell you what state, I don't want you to forward him this video, but I will tell you that if you see handwriting with these traits, it is probably best that you not engage in a relationship with them. And if you happen to be married to one, or you're dating one, or one's your dad or your father, don't call the police. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily evil. You have to stack all these traits together to come up with a conclusion of something complex, like a sociopath, psychopath, a murderer, etc. For most of you, you're gonna look at handwriting analysis and you're gonna think, man, what does my handwriting say about me? What does my signature say about me? And it's a great question. It's how I got started 30 years ago, and because of that, I have figured out things like self-esteem and sensitive criticism and social aptitude and, and how to manage people and manage myself even better. So I encourage you to learn more. By the way, if you like this video, please hit subscribe and hit the alarm button. I'm going to make more of these. And if you find people's handwriting that you find interesting, please email it to us and let us know. Maybe I'll do a video about your crazy uncle that went up the river 25 years ago. My name is Bart Baggett. Talk to you on the next video. Thanks for watching.